Well, well, well. Look who it is. After all these years, the monster meets his maker. Well, John, first of all, how are you and where are you? I'm in Sydney doing quarantine uh, before I play Joe Exotic in a series. Ah, fantastic, fantastic. I heard about this little tiger spell you're getting involved in. Yes. Well, look, John, it's been 20 years. We've never actually had the chance to speak in this way. You know, the creature and his creator, as I said. And so I've been ruminating, you know, when they said you couldn't come to the event, they had a hole to fill. People usually call me when they have holes to fill. I had three questions that came to mind. Um, and they're very simple. My first question has two parts, naturally. What was my purpose when you brought me into this world? Your purpose is to make other people feel less alone. Some people want to be alone. Mm. Some people don't want you to bother them, Hedvig. But other people uh, find you useful, I'm told, in identifying with your feelings of, of lack of control, of trauma, of abuse, of, of confusion about who you are. Uh, and ultimately, hopefully the film and the, the musical itself is a balm to the soul, but also an inspiration to find yourself slash create yourself. Um, Tommy in the end sings, you know, you're more than a woman or a man. You've created something new. And it, I guess it is a plea for a kind of a non-binary uh, finding of yourself, unfortunately through with Hedvig, it was through extreme trauma um, that, you know, that she is born from, uh, from all of that. But it, it's, um, that is the purpose of Hedvig, is to make us all feel less alone. I'm alone right now, John. How do you explain that? <laughs> I, I, perhaps a virus, perhaps your yes, attitude. The virus is brought on, the virus, you know, We've all been wearing many masks. Yeah. And it's amazing the masks that we choose to wear and the masks that we don't choose to wear. Yes. They're like, there's a lot of masks in my realm. The second part to that first question, John, was what is my purpose now? The world has shifted, the world has changed. <clears throat> I wonder now, as we are all transforming mm. what is my purpose now 20 years more so from the stage but 20 years later i believe it's the same purpose you know i i love the fact that people watch the film and they they can't place it time wise they can't say mm. oh that looks like an 80s film you know like matrix looks like this or whatever you know it doesn't have a placeable i, I like the fact that it's timeless and mm. You know, Stephen and Trask and I are um, ethos comes from the seventies and early eighties. You know, with you know John Lennon and and Lou Reed and David Bowie and Iggy Pop were our heroes. You know, with some Patti Smith, some Nico, some Tina Turner, all the people we mentioned in Midnight Radio, of course. So our our aesthetic does come from that era. And you could look at the film and maybe say that was a 70s film, but I like the fact that we are timeless and that the message of finding yourself slash creating yourself is a timeless mm -hmm. one. Um, I love the fact that our audience is incredibly diverse. You know, it's not just say gay men, it's not just say rock and rollers, it's all genders, all sexualities, all ages, all ethnicities. I love when someone so different from me says I got something useful out of it. I love when I get a message from Turkey or South America or Philippines saying Hedvig touched me and it was a good touch, <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's always a good touch, darling. Yeah, and you know, uh, trans people of all kinds have found it, uh, inspiration with Hedvig and a comfort in it, though I never think of the character as trans because he was, mutilated 
against his will with an opera a gender reassignment as opposed to a converse yeah it wasn't a confirmation it was a abnegation meaning giving up your control to the patriarchy to your boyfriend to your mom who've decided that if you're going to be a woman that's this is how you need to do it if you're a man you have to do it this way to me hedvig slash hansel is a victim of the binarchy saying you have to be a certain way to fit into the power structure and that is the beginning of trouble. The very beginning of trouble was being raped by her father. Um, that's the beginning of it all. But that metaphor of the soldier abusing her child is repeated in the government forcing this, this horrible, unconsensual you know, operation to happen. So despite the fact that it's not in any way a trans statement, Trans folks, non-binary folks, queer folks, straight folks, anyone who feels different, who didn't feel like they fit in and was forced into a, you know, a, into a box, yeah. understands the story. You know, it's hard to listen to all of that because it feels like something's been taken away from all of us in this moment. And we have to find a way to put ourselves back together again, as she says. And I do think that this story, I mean, otherwise I'd be out of a damn job, right? I do think this story works to help put people back together again in a lot of ways. A bit of a roadmap. Yeah. It's a character who's a, who has identified themselves as a victim first and foremost. And the rage and the hurt are very much on the, on the mask. Yeah. called drag um but ultimately there is healing in it you know there's healing with hedvig giving the wig to yitzhak ultimately um this character who is played by a man but uh, played by a woman by a lot usually uh, traditionally yeah. but is a man who wants to dress as a woman you know it's like we all have that flow we all have that flow. I love the fact that trans male people really identify with Hedvig in some ways more strongly than others because of that flexibility of me finding my own gender doesn't mean I'm limiting my gender. You know, I mm. think of tra trans male friends who uh, find that it's free them up to be pansexual, to, to do drag as a trans man. You know, the layers of gender that we deal with are that complex and Hedvig acknowledges that it doesn't say to be trans you have to be a certain way to be non-binary you have to be a certain way to be gay you have to be a certain way it's reminding us that we're all a gender of one mm. absolutely I think right now we're finding ourselves in different categories a lot of the time we have to identify with this that or the other yeah and it's this. exhausting and we're it's exhausting ultimately... and it's inciting at the end of the day it is, and it's rats in a cage when we're attacking our, our natural allies while Trump laughs in his tower. Let's get, all get together and find what we have in common because the enemies are obvious and they're not us. <laughs> they're not. <laughs> all right. <clears throat> the second question, also two parts. <coughs> John, is there a secret to finding your other half? Oh, God. Well, that's the biggest question. The myth of the Think origin of love. It. Yeah. The origin of love myth, which comes from Plato. It comes from one man. You know, it's, it's not a myth. It comes from a tradition of many people. It's one queer man <laughs> deciding to tell a story about the origin of love that might be useful. It feels very modern in some ways. Um, but it's, it's also... Crashing. Thunder yes. crashing. Oh, right is now. there? Yeah. Absolutely. So. Maddening. Yeah, go on. The fire is shut down from the sky. But ultimately, we have to find, again, find what, how the metaphor works for us. It seems to say, oh, there is another half. There's another person who can complete you. But if you really think about how Hedvig uses the metaphor, by the end, there's a, a wholeness. When you see the tattoo faces coming together, at the end, when Hedvig seems to be at her rock bottom. You know, there's a sense of, you know, 
there's no lover in sight, but all the experiences, including the one with Tommy, who by the end in her mind is saying, please forgive me. Um, the forgiveness leads to an inner wholeness, you know, and I think we can find our other half within ourselves. And perhaps that's a healthier way to do it because to say to someone, you are my other half is a little arrogant, <laughs> you know, even to say you are their other half is a little not taking, you know, your own power. You know, what about two whole people coming together? You know, I think that's ideally the goal and you make each other better, but you're not necessarily uh, vital for your existence. You know, I think that's a healthier way of looking at, at the myth of the origin of love. The second part to that question is once you've found that other half, how do you hold on to them? I guess we well, can I apply don't, it to the answer as well. Well, I think holding on to them might not be the way to think about it you know that that again implies possession ownership you can't really possess another person uh healthily so perhaps our other maybe there's more than one other half you know maybe there's more than one soulmate um and as we know there's different kinds of soulmates right there's ones that are sexual the ones that are not there are those that are family members there are those you've never met you know some might say walt whitman uh, you know, I might say Walt Whitman was my soulmate who I never met. And so you may have many other halves and not to force them to stay is probably part of the goal, you know, is to this time we have together, let's honor it and respect each other and enjoy it. But you can't, if it changes as things do, maybe it has a, a time limit or maybe it shifts. I mean, there's people I've been with romantically and we took years off and we got back together. You know, it's like, you never know what, what other half means and what relationships mean and to force it into a box of like marriage or lifelong or monogamy can maybe kill it. You, you brought up Walt Whitman and because I'm in Oregon and I'm living out here with the radical fairies in the forest, I thought the last thing we could do would be appropriate to do a little divination. I know something you're fond of, yes? Yes. Ah, oh, leaves of grass. So, <clears throat> this is the complete poems. The complete poems lot. here. It's a lot. So, leaves of grass is the beginning. But, would you like a divination, John? Yes, please. Okay. My question is, how will my experience playing Joe Exotic change me? So I'm, you're going to spin, you're going to stick your finger, and I'm going to say now, and then you're going to, whatever you touch is going to be the answer. But you go to the beginning of that sentence, and that's the answer. You want the complete poem, the whole book? Yes. Okay. And I'm going to think, 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 and now. From Birds of Passage. Be every life a share, or more or less. None born, but it is born. Concealed or unconcealed, the seed is waiting. Wow, the seed. By every life a share, or more or less. None born, but it is born. Concealed or unconcealed, the seed is waiting. Wow. Birds of Passage, Song of the Universal. There you are, the first bird. All right, there's a seed there. Okay, we'll see what it leads to. I can't tell you what a privilege it is um, as someone who breathed life into me, uh, who changed my life, clearly, and continues to every night. I can't tell you what a privilege it is to speak with you. Thank you for your time and your thoughtful answers and lastly what do you want the, the people tonight watching the film what do you want them to walk away with i want you to walk away with uh a new date a um <laughs> a perhaps uh an inspiration to try something they haven't tried before that they've always meant to for me it was drag and rock and roll and uh 
which were things I worshiped but didn't accept in myself fully, like I was afraid of my feminine side. So find that part of you that you're afraid of, mm. bring it, manifest it, and see if it's useful to you in some creative way. If it isn't, let go of it, but bring it forth. As the Gnostics said, who inspired the name Tommy Gnosis, what you bring forth from yourself will save you, but what you do not bring forth from yourself will destroy you. So there you go. With that, I thank you. Thank you, <laughs> All right. John. All right. Take care, everybody. Bye.